What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Monday Slate Preview Twitch stream slash YouTube show. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe and like. It greatly does help us out. Wow. 10 game slate. <laughs> oh, man, it's been a while since we had one of these 10 gamers. Um, I am so ready for the Masters, too, uh, for my Twitch chat. Uh, talk about the Masters theme song, so... Uh, thank you, uh, Sir Twitch, a lot for the follow. Greatly do appreciate it. Let's talk about this slate. Uh, th there's some good micro uh, tournaments over on DraftKings today. There's the $4.150 150 max, and there's some other good micro tournaments. They're going to be running them for the next week. So um, if you are an MME guy or you've always wanted to try it, uh, this is probably your best week to do so. Let's talk about the 10 games. Uh, first things first, just a reminder, uh, NBA trade deadline is Thursday. So this is one of those weeks where I, I, I'm i pretty conservative in terms of playing guys that are rumored to be gone. So I'm looking at you, Robert Covington, for example. Uh, probably won't make a, a team of mine uh, over the next couple of days. But other than that, that's like the one, really the one guy I've heard a lot of buzz about i guess marcus morris would probably fit in that category too but unless i hear like some pretty heavy buzz i'm not just going to completely scare away from people so all right let's do it first game on the board orlando at charlotte orlando five point favorites uh the injury news here is that evan fournier is a game time decision I believe he's expected to play but let me just double check that Thought I had my injury dad information up, but I did not. Orlando. Orlando. I have Fournier. He's day to day, but I am pretty sure he's playing. Uh, he's questionable. So, obviously, if he sits, uh, that definitely is a boost for Terrence Ross. Uh, 4,700. Uh, he would hop into that starting lineup, most likely, and, and pick up the extra minutes. Uh, as we can kind of see in the past... Uh, he can play it in those low 30s. Um, kind of a gunner, but against Charlotte, that definitely does provide you some upside. Um, if he was to miss as well, Nikola Vucevic's spot would look a little better, 8,800. Um, he's kind of the high usage guy here on the Magic. Hasn't really put up a ton of usage lately, but he's been still in that mid-20s, playing about 30 to 34 minutes. He's appropriately priced, uh, but this matchup is good. Uh, good question in my Twitch chat, but I will save it for when we get to that game. Uh, Aaron Gordon, 6,100. Eh, I mean, he's fine, but you just never know what you're going to get. Low usage or high usage Gordon. High usage Gordon's fun, but you just don't get it very often, so I I'm not going to try to, you know, guess that. That's really it for Orlando. Orlando's kind of a boring team. There's, like, really only three or four guys that like, you can ever really consider playing. Charlotte side, Devontae Graham, Terry Rozier. Prices are down, but this is one of the lowest totals of the game at 202. They're projected for under 100 points. I just don't really see, need to see any point in playing any of these guys if healthy. I guess the one guy would be if P.J. Washington was to miss, they could showcase Marvin Williams for a trade. Uh, that would make some sense. But, I mean, it's Marvin Williams. Do you really want to play Marvin Williams? Probably not, right? Um, and he's doubtful. So, you know, Marvin Williams, I, I would expect, probably gets about 24, 25 minutes. But, again, you, you really want to go down with Marvin Williams? Probably not. But I merely mention it. He's, instead of having a cheap guard, he's a cheap big. Would draw a little bit of a different line of construction for you. But I don't think it's a great option. I would never touch Michael Carter Williams in this spot. We've got enough value guards. We really don't need to play fringy ones. Um, let's move on. Knicks at Cavaliers a uh, ton of injury news in this game so um, let's just kind of go through it real quick uh, for the Knicks uh, Alfred Payton is back from his one game suspension for decking Jay Crowder into the front row uh, Marcus Mil M Morris has a illness um, I'm going to go ahead and assume that injury tag is the we are considering trading Marcus Morris uh, illness I, I highly doubt that that's a real illness um, that's just my guess uh, Julius Randle uh, is probable, and Mitchell Robinson is probable. So we're really just looking at the Marcus Morris illness. Um, I would highly doubt Marcus Morris plays in this game. 
So that opens up some some minutes and some usage for guys like Reggie Bullock and Damian Dotson and Wayne Ellington. But again, you don't really need to play any of these guys on this big of a slate. But Alfred Payton, 6,500. I think this is a pretty fair price against Cleveland. Cleveland's one of the worst defensive teams in the league, especially at protecting the rim. Payton loves to attack the rim. Um, He should be well-rested coming off of that suspension. So I I definitely think this is a very good Elf Payton spot. I think that's really it for the Knicks. I really don't really want to play anybody else. Like I could see the case for Bobby Portis, but as long as Taj Gibson's playing those 15 minutes a night, you're just not going to get Bobby Portis into those low 20s, which is what you really need to to start considering him. So uh, Cleveland, Kevin Love's price is probably too cheap, 7100. Um, he's been being a little more aggressive and assertive lately. Uh, hasn't made a ton of threes in every game, but when he gets hot, he definitely has a ceiling. Uh, don't hate that against the Knicks. Uh, let's see. Other than that, you know, I, I, I just really don't like C.D. Osman. I like, but he's starting to seed minutes over to Kevin Porter Jr. He's been playing better in more minutes. I think you'd have to lean Kevin Porter Jr. right now. Um, Osman really hasn't cracked uh, 25 minutes in a while. Even in that competitive Toronto game, he didn't really get minutes. So that's a little bit concerning. I think they like Kevin Porter. I think they want to see what he can do, especially while he's hot. So uh, Porter over Osman for me would be the second uh, cab I would consider. But again, this isn't a, a you know a game that we're like super targeting. It's only a 215 total, so I don't, we don't need to get too carried away with it. Why is Alfred not the assist uh, guy he was in Orlando? Well, there's just no one on the Knicks to make a shot. But he's been better lately. Uh, 7, 8, 9, 11, 9, 8, 11. Yeah, that's pretty good. So he's been posting a bunch of double-doubles. So he's been better than maybe you thought in, in the assist category. Let's move on to game number three. Is Kevin Love on the trade block? Uh, good question from uh, Twitch chat. No. I mean, yes, he's on the trade block, but there's just no way he's going to get dealt. Um, his salary is too high. There really isn't any matching salary out there for him. So I, I don't see Kevin Love being traded. I would have no issues playing Kevin Love. And if he was to get traded, it would be a surprise to me, and I would just eat it. But that's why you got to play responsibly. Did I miss the hot take? No, no hot takes yet. Um, I don't think I promised a hot take, but we'll find one inevitably. Um, Chris Daps Porzingis, 7,000 in the next game uh, at Indianapolis here. Uh, Indy, the five-point favorites. Uh, Christoph Porzingis is a 1.3 uh, point per minute guy. Uh, we saw him play 36 minutes against Houston. That That's a little bit um, higher than even I projected him out to be in that first game. I thought he played 32. I'll probably project him for 32 minutes again. But again, at 1.3 point per minute, uh, that's just going to be a fantastic option for me. Um, double, double likely. So he, he's a, kind of a lock for me. Um... You know, other than that, from Dallas, like there's some options for you. Like, well, not Jalen Brunson at 6K, um, not Dorian Finney-Smith at 6K, Tim Hardaway Jr. at 5600. Look, I, I know he's been brutal t- in, in the first two games uh, with no Luka Doncic, but he's still going to play 30 minutes and he's still going to take shots. And I, I'm just not going to let that first two bad games like really get in the way of Tim Hardaway Jr. is going to be the highest usage guy outside of Chris Dapps over this six, seven game stretch. So if he's going to be priced as one of the cheaper ones, I'm going back there. Whether it's fun or rosy, um, I I do think we have to go back there. Uh, J.J. Barea should play um, after uh, resting on the back-to-back. 4,400 I think is a fair price for him if he's going to play 22 minutes. Obviously, I guess there's DNP risk here like there was last time. But I, have, I just have to think that was a back-to-back set. So I'm not going to freak out about that. Um, for the Pacers side, Sabonis so is overpriced. Brogdon, it's just tough with Victor Oladipo back uh, playing 22 minutes. Those are just going to be really high usage minutes, and it's really going to kind of just cut everyone else. Um, if TJ Warren, oh, that's right, he got concussion, so he's going to miss. I guess that helps Jeremy Lamb a little bit. But again, like that usage sense... Oladipo's back has been cut dramatically. So it's just really tough for me to trust any of these Pacers, even with 
the injury to Warren, which would normally get me really excited, just with Oladipo back, it is just tough to, to trust the usage on any of them. Uh, Chris Tess Porzingis, a potential fade in GPPs. I don't see the point in fading him. Uh, last time he was only 20-something percent. I, I imagine today he'll get into the 40s, but I I'm not projecting to get to like 60% owned. So I, I would just play Chris Tapps. I wouldn't get cute with this one. I don't really see the point in fading. Uh, it, the game will be a little slower, but that would be fine for him. So I, I just don't see the point in fading Chris Tapps, to be honest. Uh, Sabonis so is also 2,600 more than Porzingis, and they're basically going to score about the same number of fantasy points. Like, Porzingis is only 7,000, DeMontis Sabonis, 9,600. Okay. Uh, that's a good. That's it for this game. Actually, I got one more question from my Twitch chat. Who is a good stack with Porzingis and a GPP? Honestly, no one. Like, I, I don't really see the point in stacking this game. Or really building a stack with Chris Stapps. I would just play Chris Stapps on his own. Like Tim Hardaway Jr. I guess is viable. But I'm not beating down the door to play Tim Hardaway Jr. So I, I don't really think you need to stack Chris Stapps. I just think Chris Stapps is a really poor price. Really high usage guy. I, mean, I can just show you real quick. With Luka Doncic off the floor. You can just see Chris Stapps is at 1.32 DK points per minute. So he's just an awesome just an awesome play in these situations. All right, let's move on to the uh, granddaddy of them all. Um, would you place the bonus on Fandle? He's 8,100. I got asked in Twitch chat. <sighs> Reasonable. I, I'm not sure I'm going to get there. There's, there's a power forward I like a lot um, later on. So I don't think I'm going to get there, but viable. Um, I, I don't hate it. And one more, uh, J.J. Breyer starts. Am I interested? Yeah, I'd, I'd say mildly interested. We've got a lot of value we haven't talked about yet. So, like, I'm just trying to compare J.J. Breyer to, like, Brad Wanamaker or Bruce Brown. think I would play him over Brad Wanamaker, but don't think I'd play him over Bruce Brown, if that helps. All right, Golden State at Washington. This is the uh, the granddaddy of them all. 235 total, Washington Six point favorites. I just have to assume that means that. I, I it says questionable here for D'Angelo Russell, but I can't imagine that the the Wizards are six point favorites if D'Angelo Russell's playing in this game. That that would just feel really high to me. So I, I'm gonna mentally treat D'Angelo Russell as out, um, especially because you know they're still listening on him. So I, I just don't think they're gonna rush him back. And so let's just go to Golden State. I um, mean, with, with no Russell on the floor, with no Curry, and no Willie Cully Stein, who's probably the guy we actually have to take out. So Alec Burks is the highest uh, fantasy point per minute guy, 1.17. That would make sense. Uh, Marquise Chris. Uh, one, he's on a two-way, so that he's just been not practicing with the team, and did, he's just been playing games. Um, he's been playing pretty well for them, too. Uh, what's his price? Alec Burks, 5,300. Uh, one of your default value options if Russell sits. I, I don't think you need me to explain that. Um, where is Marquise Chris in the pricing scheme? Where are you? There you are, 5,500. Uh, uh, that's a little rich for my blood. Don't hate it, though, in this pace-up spot, but that, that's probably a smidge rich, uh, smidge rich in my blood. Um, Glenn Robinson, 5,000. Um, I've been a huge Glenn Robinson fan. Uh, 0.8 fantasy points per minute uh, with no Russell on the floor. He's been playing in those upper 30s in these games without Russell. Um, this is a pace-up spot. So this is another spot where I'll probably play Glenn Robinson the third. I've really played him a lot this year when Russell's out. He's always low-owned. The price is, I wish he was a little cheaper, just because I don't think he'll have ownership either way. But I, I do like the option there at 5K. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Taylor, for your resubscription. I really do appreciate that. Um, I really do appreciate it. I know I have to come up with a better line than just really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Got to get, get a little better on that. Um, Damian Lee, 5,700. Don't hate it. 
Uh, I'm not going to touch Draymond at 6,500. He was a guy I liked when he was in the 5Ks, but over 6K is, is where I'll take a pass on that. Uh, Bradley Beal, uh, 10,000. I mean, he's just been on fire. He's going to take a ton of shots in this spot, especially if Bertons does miss. Again, there's there's another uh, guy who's potentially on the block with a uh, an injury that I don't remember him actually sustaining in a game. So uh, you got to keep your eye on that one. But if he start, if they announce he's going to play, then I would suspect he plays. Uh, if D- if D'Angelo Russell's out, is Kai Bowman a play? Kai Bowman to me just doesn't really have any usage, and I just don't really like playing low usage guys. I mean, I don't even know what Kai Bowman's price is. He's three thousand. He hasn't really played with the team since January eighteenth, um, and basically all his two way days are up. So. Um, actually, he can't play, so um, they they just don't have. He's out of two way days, so don't you can't play Kai Bowman. Uh, forgot about that. I wish it was amazing. He was just on starting so much. I forgot he was a two way guy. Uh, so you know the guards situation for the Warriors is kind of thin. So Damian Lee definitely an option where he's cheap. Uh, I, I definitely think you can go there, but I just think this is going to be a lot of minutes for Alec Burks. So I, I would be. Perfectly happy to fire, fire away on Alec Burks. Wizards, uh, Bradley Beal, 10000 expensive, worth it though. Everyone else is kind of just a dart throw. I think you can d- take dart throws on these guys. They're cheap enough. Like you could take a dart throw on Ish Smith. You could take a dart throw on Isaiah Thomas, Ian Mahimi. Thomas Bryant's probably a little too expensive to call a dart throw. But you can definitely try it. But for me, there's, there's too many guys on the Wizards that play minutes, so I'm not really trying to get to any of these guys. Just kind of more fillers if they do make teams. But this is this is a 235 total, so this is definitely one of those games where if you're you know approaching lock and you kind of are looking for an extra piece of value, going to the 235 total game, not necessarily the worst idea in the world. Okay, let's go to the Boston Celtics. Uh, they play the Atlanta Hawks today. Uh, Boston is a six-point favorite. Uh, the news in this game, Trey Young is probable he will play. Uh, Kemba Walker out, Marcus Smart out. And I think the rest of these guys are still questionable. I don't think any of them got ruled in. Let me just double check because that was happening right as I hopped on air. I don't think any of the other Hawks got ruled in. Uh, D'Angelo Hunter is doubtful. Bruno Fernando is doubtful. Bembry is doubtful. Cam Reddish, I believe, is in the concussion protocol. He's out. Alex Len is out. Jabari Parker is out. So the first question I have is how many Hawks are even available? So no Bembry, no Parsons, no Bruno, no Jabari, no Len, no Reddish, no Hunter. So that leaves us 10 bodies. And realistically, Evan Turner and Charlie Brown aren't going to play minutes. So this, this gets us to one of those eight-man rotation spots. These are fantastic options to look at. I mean, honestly, like, who the hell is going to play the minutes other than Trey Young, John Collins, and Kevin Herter? Like, Damian Jones at center? I mean, I guess. But who's going to play in the wing? Like, they have no wings available. Evan Turner is just too hurt to play real minutes. Like, could Vince Carter play, like, 25 minutes? <laughs> I don't think he's in play, but I have to ask. Like, he's played 24 minutes twice. I mean, I guess that this probably isn't the craziest idea I've considered, but, I mean, Herter's just going to play, like, 40 minutes. And so is Trey Young. And even against Boston, which is a really good defensive team, if you're going to play that sort of minutes, that's a pretty appealing option for you. Uh Minutes, you know, especially with guys who have decent usage rates, you know, Kevin Herter, 18%, John Collins, 24%, Trey Young, 35 obviously is elite. You know, Brandon Goodwin even could play minutes. So, Travion Graham, I mean, he just has played no minutes for this team, but I guess it's possible. He played 20 last game out of nowhere. So, this is definitely a situation where I'm going to try and just look at, the, I mean, I guess we can look at the on-off and see if we can find anything, but I suspect we're not going to. Len, Crab, Radish, Hunter, Bembry, Jabari, and 
That's it. I think that's all the ones that matter. Uh, so let's see. Jabari Parker. Oh, man, here we go. Fancy points for a minute. Come on. Uh, Trey Young, 1.27. I mean, Bruno's 1.39. Goodness gracious. So, I mean, the, the, this is just going to be... This is all small sample stuff. So, it's going to kind of just be a little more of guessing and, and kind of which guys you expect to do well. You know, Brandon Goodwin's really interesting if he starts. If they just go really small. Trey Young, by the way, 1.47 in these moments. But Brandon Goodwin could just play a lot of minutes here. So, I don't hate it. Neither I don't hate the Vince Carter idea either if he starts. This is a lineup that I definitely want to see what, what's coming in here before lineup play. Uh, that that's the one I definitely need to see. If we get a random starter like Brandon Goodwin, I, I'm probably gonna trust it because I don't have any history here of them being this depleted on the wing, and I don't think they really want to roll out Jeff T for big minutes. And I just think that's probably gonna leave Goodwin, who's played pretty well uh, when he's gotten minutes. You know, last game out against Dallas, played 24 minutes, put up 27 fantasy points. He's 3,200. And I think Brandon Goodwin's a guy that's going to go off of everyone's radar because that was a play that, you know, oh, if Trey Young is out, then everyone's going to play Brandon Goodwin. But when you look at how depleted they are on the wing, like they could just play Kevin Herter at the three and play two guards. So definitely think that is an option. Uh, let's see. I think that's it for the Atlanta side. Boston side, obviously. Uh, Marcus Smart, Kemba Walker are out. I think the price on Brad Wanamaker is fair. I think this is about what he should be priced at. I just don't trust him worth a darn. So if I go to the Boston Celtics now and I put on... Let's just put on Jason Tatum because I just need one of the starters out there. I don't want the garbage time. And I take out Kemba Walker and Marcus Smart. Brad Wanamaker is a .86 DraftKings point per game per minute performer in these situations, or .76 points per minute in these in these scenarios. It's not terrible. It's a pace up spot against the Hawks. The Hawks are a bad defensive team. They don't have any wings. We just talked about how they're probably gonna have to play small, which is perfectly fine for the Boston Celtics. It's not my favorite, but I think that Brad Wanamaker is gonna be underappreciated as a value play just because of his historical uh, busting in spots where one of Smart or Kemba was available and they just played the, that guy huge minutes. That's not this situation. This situation is there is no Kemba and there is no Smart and so there is no ball handling available. So it could be Javante Green. I would have probably been a little higher on Javante if he just hadn't lost all his minutes suddenly out of nowhere. Th that That's a little bit concerning. I, I thought he could definitely play some backup point. But he has just lost all his minutes back to Brad. So that's a little annoying. That's an option. I'm not sure I would trust Tremont Waters playing minutes. But that, that's a 3k option if you need to. <laughs> um, someone in my Twitch chat making a joke. Quit calling him Brad Watermaker. His name is Brad Value Maker. He has not made value a lot this year. But um, I think it's a good spot. Um, the price on... Hayward and Brown are too high for me. Tatum at 75, I think it's the fairest of this group. I think that's the one I would have interest in if you're looking to get another Celtic outside of the value options. That's the one I'm going to go to. I, I just can't get to 8K for Gordon Hayward and 7,700 for Jalen Brown. I love those players, but there's just no way at that price point. Cantor at 4.3K would make me a little more excited if the Celtics big man rotation wasn't like the one thing that's healthy with this team. Um, it's an, it's an option against Atlanta. You can definitely get there in 18 minutes, but just not one of my favorite value spots today. Phoenix at Brooklyn. This is a 224 and a half total. Brooklyn is two point favorites. Um, I see a lot of the questions in Twi Twitch guys. I, I'm going to go game by game and then I'll take all the general questions at the end. Spencer Dinwiddie. I mean, we have to see if Kyrie Irving plays. I mean, he's out for a while, right? So without Kyrie Irving, Spencer Denwitty takes over that lead role. Just 8K for him is just such an expensive price. Don't hate it, though, but it is an expensive price. Um, injury news, uh, Tarian Prince is available, I believe. 
and he's a, a guy I really like in these games. Uh, 5,100, uh, good matchup to defend. A uh, little bit pacey. Uh, I do like Praetorian Prince. Uh, power forward only eligibility is annoying. DraftKings, by the way, quietly has been uh, cutting back their uh, MPE. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed that, but like more guys are becoming just one position guys uh, over the last few weeks. So that's been kind of changing the game up a little bit. Um, I saw something on Levert earlier, and I can't figure out what it was. And I don't see an injury tag on him, so I think he's going to play. But I, 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 regardless, I like Tarion Prince the most. Um, and then Joe Harris, if you're looking for a value option on, in this game. My favorite center on the board is DeAndre Ayton today. 7,700 against Brooklyn. The guy's just been an absolute tear since getting a starting lineup spot back. And this this is just one of the, the cupcake matchups for centers. We've watched Drummond put up 20 and 20 on this team three or four times this season. So I, I don't hate this at all. Um, I, I think it's a really, really good option. I, I don't want to say he's going to put up 2020, but I would not be surprised if he put up 2020. Um, Mikel Bridges has been a guy I've been playing a lot of lately. Uh, he just hasn't really had the game where he's made any shots since he got the starting lineup spot, but um, Sarge is now out too. He's going to play 30 to 35 minutes a night, and he was a you know, 15 16% usage guy. I like him. I, I think it's... Nice. I think, especially against Brooklyn, I think they're going to let him try to take some shots in the corner. So, I think he's an interesting option at 4,500. Kind of wish he would just stay at 4,000, though, until someone rushes him. But 4,500 is totally, totally fair. I think that's it for this game. Anybody have any questions in the Twitch chat for this game? I don't think this game is pretty... Oh, Devin Booker, I guess. Should talk about him. 8,600, I'm not going to play Devin Booker. There's just other studs I like a little bit more than Booker. But if you wanted to, to stack up this game, I don't mind having Devin Booker. Okay. Uh, let's move on. Philly at Miami. I do want to just point out, um, this is in Miami, the day after the Super Bowl. I would not be surprised if uh, a random illness, illness appeared out of nowhere uh, in this spot. And Philly actually misses the most games in the NBA by far due to illness. You know, other than that, though, Philly's finally kind of healthy. Uh, the pricing on these guys are fair. Miami's a good defensive team. So, you know, the Heat have only lost three times at home all season. I think this is definitely a spot where I'm just going to kind of ignore Philly. Uh, I mean, I know Embiid, 9,200. is really tempting in tournaments, especially on FanDuel, where he's 8,800. It is so tempting to play in beat, but this spot against Bam is just really tough. So I'm just going to let it go one more game and, and try to hop on the Embiid train after this one. But Ben Simmons, Embiid, Tobias are all healthy, so it's just really tough to play any of these guys. For the Heat, you know, they're starting to get healthy too, which for them has just not been a such thing that happens all season long. Uh, I don't really see the point in playing any of these guys like none of them are popping as value plays to me you know you asked me on a 10 game slate which is the game i'm least interested in it would be this one so i mean it's jimmy butler revenge i just eh, 8100 for him it's just it's just a really expensive price for against a really good defensive team i just i feel like you're forcing it here if you're playing guys in this game it just really feels like a force so I'm going to just quickly move off this game. It's the second lowest total on the board, too. Um, Detroit at Memphis. Uh, so this is a good game. Uh, Derek Rose is out. Luke Kennard is out. Reggie Jackson is questionable, which was a weird one to see. I, I really liked Reggie Jackson as a value, and then he gets a questionable tag himself. I mean, Bruce Brown Jr. is probably one of the better value plays on the slate. Uh, fantasy Cruncher right now projects him at 26.4 fantasy points. I think that's a pretty good projection that's seven times value so i think that's definitely an option but the other wing guys are also pretty cheap here like langston galloway is pretty cheap he's lost some minutes but he's cheap if you know all these guys were to miss those minutes would be back for him uh svee's been playing big minutes i don't hate that so i definitely don't mind those options if marquise morris was to miss christian would be the huge beneficiary there uh since Seku basically 
uh, got taken out of their, rota uh, their starting rotation. Morris has played all the minutes. But in this spot, if Morris was to miss, um, they would go to Christian Wood for sure. And Wood's just a massive 1.17 fantasy point per minute guy. So don't get cute. I, there's definitely been one or two slates this year where Christian Wood has been an obvious play, and I've gotten cute on it. So I'm trying to just tell myself don't get cute on him. Uh, for Detroit, I mean, Drummond is Drummond. Not a great spot against Valanciunas. He's a pretty good defensive center. So I don't think I'm going to pay up for, for him, especially when Aiton's only 7700 Just don't see that. Same kind of deal with Jonas, like, Aiton's only $600 more. I'm going to get to Aiton. John Morant's coming off of what was just a complete no-show against Memphis. I, I didn't honestly see it coming. Uh, but um, I, I do think $6,800 is a fair price for him if you want to go back to that well. Other than that, though, again, this is a Memphis team that's getting pretty healthy. So I'm not really sure there's anyone that I just think is going to play monster minutes. So... We've got some other good values coming up and, and a couple studs that I really like. So, And Bruce Brown is just a fantastic option at 3,800. Okay, let's move on to uh, a, a very sneaky game, which is Minnesota-Sacramento, 226 total here. Uh, Marvin Bagley is out. Rashawn Holmes is doubtful. That means we get uh, Bayelitsa um, some more, uh, 6,000. Uh, you know, hasn't played well the last couple of games, but those are some tough matchups. Uh, Clippers and Lakers. So we're getting a little bit of a discount here for on him in what's probably his first good matchup in a couple weeks. Uh, last time against Minnesota, he put up 54 fantasy points. So I, I do like this spot for him a lot. It's a good matchup. Bogdan Bogdanovich is fine. Buddy Heald, the 6,200, coming off the bench. I really like him off the bench, but... You know, again, other than that one Minnesota game, just really hasn't flashed the ceiling yet. But I don't mind him at 6,200. Cat at 10-6 is viable. I just am not going to get there because I've eaten. But I totally understand it if you wanted to play Cat in this spot. It's a good matchup against Sacramento's... I guess I have to theoretically call them centers, but it's basically Dwayne Dedman and Harry Giles. Uh, Dwayne Dedman finally put up another good game against the Clippers. Don't hate him, 4,700. His price went down. Uh, you know, it's a pretty good matchup here for a stretch five. Uh, Fox, 8,200, I, I like a lot. This is a game that just has a lot of guys I like. I like Heald at this price. I like Bielitz at this price. I like Bodon at this price. I would love Covington, but that's the one player that who's just... He is too hotly involved in trade rumors for me to touch. Uh, that, that's the one player that I am, I am just going to X out. I, I don't want to get burned by him. It's a late game to boot. So there really wouldn't be a whole lot of swapping options. So that's the one guy I definitely do. Uh, oh, question on Detroit. Seku played 34 minutes. What? This is what happens when you don't pay attention to every game over the weekend. Seku played 34 minutes? Really? Wow, he played 35 minutes after basically being a DMP. Wow. Well, that's interesting. If Morris is out, Seku at 3K becomes a very, 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 very viable option very quickly. Thank you for that. I, I didn't even notice he played. I just assumed he had coach's decision DMP'd again. So um, thank you for that. That's what happens when you're watching the Super Bowl. I totally didn't see that. So thank you for that. I'm glad someone caught that. I hadn't noticed that in my research. So that's why we do the shows. You know, you guys learn things, I learn things. So, greatly do appreciate that. Uh, but back to this uh, Sacramento game. I mean, Harrison Barnes, talk about a guy who can just stand in the corner for 40 minutes a night. So, that's an option for you if you like those type of players. I don't, but it's better than your player being on the bench, I guess. But I, I like these. I think the pricing in this game is, like, the most fair of any of the games. So, I definitely can see myself stacking this game. I can definitely see myself playing multiple players from this game on a lot of teams. So this is definitely the game I think I have the most interest in. Other than the last game. The last game is my favorite. You know, San Antonio at the Clippers. I think this is a game that's going to draw zero ownership from the field. I love this game. So Kawhi Leonard has been absolutely lost in the shadow of Dame Lillard. Look at these big game logs. 
62, 48, 62, 50, 65, 64, 72, 64. And the games where he doesn't get there, um, 46 fantasy points in 24 minutes. He just, they, a lot of their games just haven't been on slates. Like you can even see, like they're just on random slates, day times. And so I don't think people have noticed like how awesome Kawhi Leonard has been. So I'm going to play Kawhi Leonard at 10-3. I, I think it's a really cheap tag. So that's my favorite stun of the night is Kawhi. I, I just, the floor is so high right now. Just hard for me not to touch it. It's just fantastic. So. Yeah, Paul George 7,800. I can't quite get there because I just don't trust Doc Rivers in terms of what the minutes restrictions are going to be. He said 20 last time. And then in a game where Kawhi played 24, Paul George played 25. So I'm not sure what's going on there. So I'm just going to kind of wait and see on Paul George. Now, a lot of that's just because I love Kawhi. Um, in terms of the role guys on the Clippers, I'm not really interested in any of these guys. They're playing a whole bunch of them. Still trying to figure out, I think, who they want to trade here this week. So I, I just, again, like Mo Harkless, another guy who's likely to get dealt. I'm not sure why you would play Mo Harkless on this slate, but I um, just want to point that out. For the Spurs, I, I've been on the DeMar DeRozan train uh, for a while now. I am not stopping. Um, his assist numbers are real. He's been really good on all sides of the ball. Um, high usage, high efficiency. Uh, I just love what he's doing right now. 8700 is a little expensive, but I'm going to fit him in in some teams with Kawhi for sure because I just love what he does with the basketball. Other than that, though, again, Spurs are another team that just has a ton of guys. Ton, ton, ton. Ton of guys. So that was done the game. I'm going to answer some questions uh, on the entire slate. So um, if you got those, fire them up in the Twitch channel. And I'll be sure to read them for those of you over on YouTube. Who would I lock on tonight's slate? Bruce Brown Jr., to be honest, is probably the, the, the favorite for lock of the night. I just really like when he's got the ball in his hands. And... You know, I don't, I'm not going to count on him shooting, you know, 80% from the field or getting 10 rebounds, but I, I just love Bruce Brown at 3,800. Point guard, small forward eligibility is really nice. And when he gets the minutes, he's a guy that's just consistently performed. So Bruce Brown's the guy I'm going to lock. Um, Jeff Teague, no, I'm not locking Jeff Teague, especially with Trey Young in. They just have not played many. The funny thing is, so if I, this is one of the things that you can definitely look at. And it's actually, I'm going to have to go to, here we go. So if I look at um, Jeff Teague and, so Jeff, uh, Jeff Teague's played 169 minutes. He's played exactly 58 with Trey Young. So that's not a whole lot. Man, look at that though. 2.22 when they're on the floor together. But yeah, I'm not going to lock Teague. He's in my player pool, but not a guy I'm locking for sure. FanDuel lock of the night. Uh, let's see. I have to pull up FanDuel's pricing. Give me one second. I'm going to throw that on the secondary screen here. FanDuel lock of the night would be... Probably Bruce Brown again, but let's just see. Yeah, Bruce Brown still. Even at 4,000, so Bruce Brown's the lock. D'Angelo Russell questionable. Well, that's an upgrade. Well, that would really, really change my Golden State value love, um, especially when it's an upgrade like that. Um, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Favorite center after the fan on Fanduel other than Aiton? Boy, that is a tough question. Probably Marquise Chris, but it's close. Uh, rank them Kawhi, Trey, and Beal. I would rank them in that order. A Bizzle. Do we pair Reggie and Brown together? Well, if Reggie if Reggie Jackson plays, you definitely can. But you have to see if uh, Reggie Jackson plays. He's questionable. What am I doing with Hayward, Tatum, and Brown? I mean, on DraftKings, it's really just Tatum only. I'm not paying 8K for Gordon Hayward as much as I love Gordon Hayward. 
and I'm not paying 7700 for Jalen Brown either. I love Jalen Brown, but that's not happening. So, uh, Dinwiddie looking good. Dinwiddie's an option. He's expensive, but I don't mind him for sure. He, he's definitely one of those guys you can play when you talk you off of him. Uh, a little bit better of a play on FanDuel, too, where he's only 7100 and he uses up one of those shooting guard spots. That's pretty nice. Thoughts on Montrez Harrell? Am I being wrong? Am I wrong for being high on him? I mean, no. It's a good matchup for him. Uh, the Spurs front court is bad. For me, it's just a minutes question. Like, is he going to get to the 29 minutes or is he going to play closer to 26? Tough for him to really break the slate in 26 minutes. So that's just a minutes question for me. But he's a good option. If Jackson is out, would you lock button Brown? I mean, as of, you know, 4 p.m. Eastern, which is where we're at right now, I'm probably locked down in Brown with or without Jackson, to be honest. Um, I, I think he's going to play big minutes either way. So I, I'm perfectly fine rocking in Bruce Brown Jr. right now. Uh, favorite point guard on FanDuel? Do, 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 do. Let's go with Elf Payton at 64 as a steal. I'll go with him. Also wrote the primer over on FantasyCruncher.com. All our articles are free. Check it out. Um, we have a we have a FanDuel core plays and uh, DraftKings core plays and the primer. So check all that out. It's free. So FantasyCruncher.com. Uh, yeah, but um, other other point guards other than Peyton, De'Aaron Fox. But you're right. I really didn't mention a whole lot of the of these FanDuel point guards. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a Slim playing pool for me. Here's a good question. I hear the phrase a lot. I'm not paying such and such for so and so. What do you see that has you saying that? Your rating. So it just comes down to the price versus the fantasy points that I'm projecting for the player. And, and compared to the other options on the board. So it's not like I it that's I you say that when it's not like I don't like I don't hate the player, right? So like, you know, there are certain studs that I'm just like, hey, I don't like this spot, but like, I liked Cat today. I like Beal. I like Sabonis against the Dallas front court. But what I'm projecting them to do for the price is just going to be an absolute no way in hell. They're going to make my teams. So that's what I'm trying to get to cross is like, I don't hate the player. I hate the price. Uh, Barry TV, what do you think of Seiku if Morris can't play? Join late, my bad. Well, First of all, I missed that Seiku played 35 minutes out of nowhere, so don't uh, don't feel bad. But just to recap, I do like Seiku a lot if Morris is out. Favorite game stack? Hmm. I still think it's Minnesota-Sacramento. But I don't hate Boston-Atlanta if the pricing was better. Maybe that's a FanDuel stack I can get, is Boston and Atlanta. I can definitely see myself doing that. But I'm not sure I want to do that on DraftKings where the studs are priced to the nose. But Minnesota-Sacramento, I think, is the best one. No, 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 absolutely not, Texas Mundo. That was a fantastic question. I That's why I answered it with a smile on my face. That was a great question. So, all right, I see that. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to hop into the uh, Fantasy Cruncher Discord channel. I'll be there uh, most of the day. I'm going to try to get my projections up in there. No promises. I'm just going to kind of plug away with them. It's 10 games. That's 20 teams. It can get a little overwhelming, so I'm going to try, but I'm not going to make any promises on that. But, again, if you are watching on YouTube, please hit that subscribe and like button. It really does help us out. Tomorrow we'll be back to the uh, YouTube uh, slate preview show and then on the twitch channel we'll do some more instructional stuff we'll, we'll talk about some randomness we'll talk about some unique player stuff and we'll look through some monday lineups uh, i know a lot of you are playing this four dollar tournament so we'll look through the lineups in that as well with that guys really appreciate it and we'll see you next time